magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping bake the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards and those who have escaped from Azkaban prison, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen. The YouTube food series where we're baking our way through the Harry Potter books, making magical recipes every time we find an item of food and drink inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we created some crumb topped salmon fillets with Hogwarts house inspired toppings, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description. And if you're new to the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter recipes, then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell then you'll get an alert every magic monday when there's a brand new recipe speaking of which it's monday so let's get into it The dinner party is still in full swing, so let's head back into chapter two of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Art Marge's Big Mistake. Things are still fairly peaceful while the family are tucking into dessert, and we see, during the lemon meringue pie, Uncle Vernon bored them all with a long talk about grunnings. Well, I guess time flies when you're having dessert. Lemon meringue pie is an iconic dessert dish that is very popular to serve at the end of dinner parties and is up there as one of my all-time favourite desserts. You get a thin, crisp shortcrust pastry filled with zesty lemon curd and topped with a light and fluffy meringue. If you've not tried it before, this is definitely the recipe for you. Don't worry, it's not as difficult as it seems. And we're going to add in some extra magic by serving our lemon meringue pies as mini golden snitches. I'm going to walk you through step by step step and the first thing, this snitch needs to fly, so let's make some wings. To begin, we're going to create the meringue wings for our snitches as these need the longest time to bake and cool down. Separate your eggs as we're only going to use the whites at this stage, but you want to keep the yolks. Pour the egg whites into a bowl and then whisk on a high speed until it forms soft peaks. You then want to slowly add in your sugar, a spoonful at a time, whisking as you go. Once your mixture has formed stiff peaks, you can then flavour that with vanilla and salt. Whisk that through until it's lovely and glossy, and then I'm going to transfer into a piping bag with a circular tip on the end. To act as a guide for our snitches, I've traced some wings onto baking paper and then flipped that over so the ink doesn't touch the meringues. Pipe the meringue wings out onto the baking paper so that you have two for each of your pies. These then need to go into the oven at 100 degrees Celsius or 200 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. At this point you want to turn the oven off but leave the meringues inside to cool. This will help them gently cool down so you have a lovely crisp outside but a soft and marshmallowy inside. <laughs> okay next up we're moving on to our short crust pastry and of course you can buy this in supermarkets but it is a great skill to learn how to make at home and I'll let you in to a little secret. Don't overuse the flour and don't overwork your pastry. That will lead to you having a very dry dough, which will be difficult to roll out and not great to taste. So once you've got that soft dough, pop it into the fridge to firm up. Then you'll use less flour to roll it out and you'll have that lovely crisp base that is golden when it comes out the oven. To make the sweet short crust pastry, I'm gonna start off by placing the butter into a bowl and mixing until smooth. Add in the icing sugar and beat that through as well, scraping down the sides halfway through. Once it's light and fluffy, you can then add in your egg yolks and vanilla. Mix this through until it's well combined. Next, I'm going to add in the flour and then stir this through on a slow speed until it forms a soft dough. Remove the dough from the bowl, place into some cling film and then wrap it up and pop it into the fridge for half an hour. Once the dough has firmed up slightly, you can then flour your surface and roll out the dough to about half a centimetre thick. Use a cookie cutter or a stencil to cut out your circles, and then I'm going to press these into my silicone moulds. I prefer to use these rather than tart tins so you get more room for your fillings. The easiest way to line your mould is to cut out a full circle and press that in. But if you'd like some super clean edges, then cut out a smaller circle for the base and some thin strips for the sides, pressing them into place. 
Pierce the bottoms with a fork to prevent them from rising. I'm then going to prepare some baking paper to go in the middle. The easiest way is to fold these into small squares, fold them in half again, and then measure them against the pie shells. Cut the edges where it reaches the centre of the circle and then unwrap. Scrunching up these pieces of baking paper makes them nice and easy to fit into the middle of your tart shells. Fill these with baking beans and then you want to pop them into the oven at 170 degrees Celsius or 340 Fahrenheit and bake them for 10 minutes. At this point you can remove the baking beans and the baking paper and then pop them back into the oven for another 5 to 7 minutes until they're beautifully golden. The filling for our lemon meringue pie snitches is going to be lemon curd, which I love in desserts, especially at the end of a large meal, because it's the perfect palate cleanser. It's juicy, zesty, and is super easy to make at home. Better yet, you only need a few ingredients to bring this one to life, so you can make it in advance and then keep it for a wide range of recipes. This is what you need to do. If you're short for time, you can use shop-bought lemon curd, but it is super easy to make at home. All you need to do is add your egg yolks, sugar, lemon zest, lemon juice, and salt into a bowl over simmering water. Whisk this continually for about 10 minutes until it's thickened. You then want to remove it from the heat and then slowly add in cubes of cold butter. This will gradually lower the temperature of your lemon curd and help thicken it up. Once all your butter is incorporated and it's lovely and smooth, we're gonna let that cool down completely. So I'm gonna cover it with cling film, touching it to the surface so her skin doesn't form, and then pop it to one side. One of my favorite things about lemon meringue pie is that it's a recipe that reduces waste. We use the egg yolks in the pastry and lemon curd, and then we save the egg whites for the meringue topping. You could create a French meringue, but that needs to go back into the oven, so it would be quite difficult to decorate into our snitches. Instead, I'm gonna whip up a Swiss meringue, and this uses a hot sugar syrup, which is gonna cook them, so we don't need to bake them again, and it will give us a great chance to get that marshmallowy filling and caramelize the top. This is all you need to do next. Pour your egg whites and sugar into a bowl over simmering water and lightly whisk them through. Place a sugar thermometer in and we want to heat this until it reaches 80 degrees Celsius. At this point you want to transfer to your stand mixer and then whisk that on high for about 10 minutes until lovely and fluffy. If you touch the side of the bowl, it should feel cool. At this point you can then flavor with your vanilla and salt and then whisk for another two minutes. Transfer the Swiss meringue into a piping bag, and then it's time to decorate. Remove the tart shells from the mold and then fill with your cooled lemon curd. Using a palette knife, gently remove the cooled meringue wings from the baking paper. I'm then gonna place two blobs of Swiss meringue on either side of the tarts and use these to hold the wings in place. You then need to quickly swirl your Swiss meringue over the top so they're nice and covered. To get that signature lemon meringue pie crust, I'm then going to use a blowtorch to caramelize the top of the Swiss meringue. To finish with a shining golden snitch finish, I'm using some edible food glitter and I'm going to cover that over the top of the Swiss meringue and our meringue wings. And with that, it's game, set and match. Dessert is ready and we've caught the snitch. If you want to bag yourself 150 points, you're going to need to recreate this golden snitch inspired recipe. So let me know down below in the comments if you're going to give it a go. That's all for this week's Harry Potter recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I've got Quidditch practice, so I'll see you next week.